So you recognize this is a kinematics question because it's given you the velocity and they give you the velocity function right there. Okay. Find the value of T where P reaches its maximum velocity. So you can think of the velocity function and you can tell that it's a quadratic function and it's opening downwards. So you can basically you have a parabola. Now, I don't know exactly where it is. So I'm just randomly drawing it, right? So don't, don't think this is accurate here. But that's what they're looking for is they're looking for this point. Find the value of T, the X value, where P reaches the maximum velocity. So this is like finding the vertex. There are many ways of finding the vertex. You can take the derivative and set it equal to zero. That's probably what, what something that I would do. So V at T, I'm going to take the derivative of it. It's going to be four minus six T. And I'm going to set it equal to zero. So T is going to equal to two over three seconds. Okay. That's the derivative when it's flat, right? When it's equal to zero, this point. So that's that. Show the distance from point P to point O at this time is 88 over 27 meters. Okay. Um, point P at this time. So at this time, we started at the origin and we want to know how far I reach in terms of distance. Well, how do you find distance when you're given the velocity function? Well, that's integration. So I'm going to integrate the velocity function between zero and point P, which is two thirds. So I need to integrate this function. And that's going to give me the distance travel. So uh, what's the function again? It's a simple polynomial function, four plus four T minus three T squared, okay? So I'm going to integrate this function. Uh, 4 becomes 4t. Four 4t four becomes 2t squared. Uh, minus 3t uh, uh, squared becomes minus t cubed. Actually, let me write the equation down first. Right, this answer, no, it doesn't allow me to. Let me erase this part. And I'll add this middle part here. Uh, four plus four t minus three t square dt zero and between two thirds. Right, integrating the uh, four becomes four t. Integrating the four t becomes two t square. Integrating the minus three t square becomes minus t to the power of three. Okay, now you can add a plus c. But you can also do, well, it's a definite integral. So it goes from zero to two thirds. So it's, that's going to equal to F at two thirds minus F at zero, right? So I'm going to substitute two thirds into the function minus F at zero. Now F at zero, it's a zero. So this part, I don't have to calculate. It's the two thirds that I need to do by hand because it's a paper one. So four times two over three plus two times two over three square minus two over three to the power of three. Okay, so I have, this is gonna be eight over three. This is two square, which is four times two, which is eight. Here's three square, which is nine. Here's two to the power of three, which is eight. Three to the power of three, which is 27, right? I'm gonna common denominator it. So this is gonna make uh, all common denominator of being 27, because that's easy to add. This does not change. This I times by three. This I times by nine. So when I add them up, this is 96 minus eight. 96 minus eight is 88. So we have shown that the distance between P from zero is 88 over 27 meters.
definite integral, right? Integrate the velocity function between zero and two thirds. And it's gonna give you the distance traveled between that time. Okay, so that's part A and we got our seven marks. Now part B, sketch the graph of V against T, which is this uh, um, parabola, quadratic function, clearly showing any point of intersection with the axes. So that means I want the X axis and I want the Y axis. So I need two points, right? They didn't say must show the vertex but they did say show any point of intersection with the axis. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Uh, four minus four T minus three T square. Four plus four T minus three T square is the velocity function. Okay. Well, the Y intercept is easy. The Y intercept is equal to four. That's easy, right? That's C values, the Y intercept. Uh, uh, what about the X intercept? Well, the x-intercept, I would have to either solve by factoring or I want to solve by a quadratic formula. Uh, let's see, minus 3t squared plus 4t plus 4. If I factor it, um, minus 3t and t, uh, minus 2, minus 2 would work, right? That's going to be positive 6 minus 2, which is positive 4. So T is gonna equal to, if I set both of them equal to zero, T is gonna equal to two. And T is gonna equal to, uh, is that right? Minus three T squared plus six minus two. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this one is going to be, what is it? Uh, two over negative three. Right? Now, time cannot be negative, so time is positive. So if I need to sketch this, no, I don't want a parabola. Well, I don't want a parabola. I want a straight line. Give me a straight line. Straight line sketch. Did they say a particular point or no? uh oh from zero to three okay so from zero to three is what i wanted but it is a paper one but still we're going from zero to three the y intercept is four the x intercept is at two so it's a parabola so it's gonna go and it's gonna come down okay And that's all they're looking for on the exam. Sketch a graph of V against T, clearly showing any point of intersection with the axes between zero to three. And that's the graph. Between zero to three, well, I should go a little further because zero to three, and since my three is here, so I should all the way go over there to make sure they align. Right, and make sure that you see a bump because it's a quadratic formula. It could, uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna reach a maximum and then you come back down. All right, last part of the question find the total distance traveled by point P. Now, remember when x equal to zero, there's a change in direction. So when I do integration, I can't go from zero to three directly. I have to go from zero to two third, and then I add to go from two third to three. So total distance travel. Is gonna equal the integral between zero and two third. And then two third to uh, three. Not only do I need to go from this way, you also have to know that one of them is going to be a native answer. Right? One of them is going to be a native answer. So this is going to be uh, probably going to be a native answer. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, two, zero to two and then two to three, not two thirds. Zero to two and then two to three. Zero to two and then two to three, because that's when it changes directions, right? 
right? When the velocity equal to zero, that's when it changes direction. So here, change direction. All right, so that's positive, that's one direction, that's negative, that's another direction. So this, in theory, should be a minus sign. And as I said, usually when you do this by hand, once you get a negative answer here, you know, oh, I need to switch the answer, right? Because the distance travel cannot be negative. So uh, we know how to integrate a function already. We did that. It's, uh, where, did it, where is the answer? It's 4t plus 2t squared minus t cubed. Let's see if I can. No, I can't. So I need to copy it down. Uh, 4t plus 2t squared. 4t plus 2t squared minus t cubed between 0 and 2 minus 4t plus 2t squared minus t cubed from 2 to 3. Okay, so 0, 0 is good. 2, I do need to sub in. 4 times 2 plus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 to the power of 3. That's eight plus eight minus eight, which is just eight, okay? Now, the reason I do that is because I need to do three subtract two. So I'm gonna subtract the eight there. Now, what happens when it's three? Uh, well, I'm just gonna do the work on the side. I don't have a lot of space. So four times three plus two times three square minus three to the power of three. Well, that's 12 plus 18 minus 27. 30 minus three, uh, 27 is three. So that's three minus eight. You can see this, if I don't turn this into a negative sign, I'm gonna get a negative number. That's gonna be negative five. But because I turn it into a negative side, right? It's gonna be subtracting a negative. Or as I said, if you just did this part and you get negative five, you turn it into a positive five and yeah, because distance travel has to be positive. So a total distance travel of 13, uh, I believe it's meters. Did they say the units? Yes, meters. So 13 meters is the final answer in this question, right? It is a little bit of a work, right? It is the section B question, right? Understanding uh, the kinematics. You're given a velocity function. You're finding the distance, which is integration. Here, there is a change in direction when velocity equal to zero. So when I want the distance, total distance travel between zero to three, you have to do it in two pieces. Zero to two, two to three. Making sure they're both positive, which give you the total distance travel, right? So it is one of the harder applications of um, kinematics where it's super easy in the paper two, but in a paper one, it is quite a bit of work because you have to do all the math by hand. 